Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Uh, welcome back my dear friends a very good morning good afternoon good evening to all of you wherever you are in this part of the globe and whatever time you are listening in india as you know my good name is raghunandan sengupta from the ime department at iit kanpur in india and this is uh, the lecture under the swam lecture series and the title of the topic we are discussing is investment analysis and portfolio management so if you remember in the last class we were discussing about utility analysis and the main two important points which were the essence of the last lecture was about non cessation and that means more i give you more you want that means it's always increasing which uh, translates into the fact that the first derivative would be for the utility function would be positive and the next point under which we can categorize a, a decision maker or an investor as either a person who loves risk a person who is indifferent to risk and the person who is uh, hate risk can be classified based on the fact that the second derivative is uh, in uh, would have basically three different connotations one case it is greater than 0 the second case is basically equal to 0 and the third case is basically less than 0 so less than 0 is the case when it is increasing as a decreasing rate so the person is trying to avoid risk when it is increasing at a constant rate it will be indifferent case and for the case when it is increasing at an increasing rate we will have the person who wants to take risk uh, if you remember in the last class there were many topics to be discussed and I did mention that one of the most important points in the discussion would be the property of absolute risk aversion and the relative risk aversion and the following concepts which I will try to cover in this lecture which is the 16th one and as you know the title is investment analysis and portfolio management. We will try obviously there would be a lot of discussions in utility theory and if possible we will go into fundamental analysis and technical analysis which I think would be the fag end of the 16th lecture and carry over into the 7th lecture. So the lecture description and the topics would be absolute risk aversion, relative risk aversion, uh, the four types of uh, utility function which we will discuss is quadratic logarithmic exponential power. Then we will go into certainty equivalent and what is the concept of certainty equivalent, then discuss the axioms of utility function, then change the track and consider the concept of geometric uh, mean returns and how it can be utilized for portfolio analysis. We will also consider safety first criteria or safety first principle and consider three or four different important concept under safety first principle or criteria. And also as I mentioned we will also consider the Chebyshev's inequality and we can also consider the Markov's inequality though it uh, we would not be going to much details here and obviously the concept of stochastic dominance. <laughs> if we are able on in the 16th lecture we will consider the concepts of fundamental analysis, technical analysis, the concept of what is bullish signal, bearish signal, what is the bear trap. I will just uh, will not go into the much details because as such this course is quite in depth and quite vast in its scope. We will consider the concept of what we mean by beer trap, run the random work, the trend analysis, how they can be analyzed and so on and so forth. Now coming back uh, to the, the concept of utility function, so if you remember we were discussing the concept of risk aversion, so if I remember correctly. So risk aversion property would be true when the second derivative is less than 0. So you will have the curves which are like this. In the case when you have risk neutral property, the second derivative would be equal to 0 
which is increasing at a constant rate, the first one which is in green is increasing at a decreasing rate. And the third one would be risk seeking property, where as per the concept, the second derivative would be increasing at an increasing rate. So, these are the curves and if you remember, I, we, I have been mentioning time and again, the y axis would be the utility function and the x axis would be the wealth, which we are considering. So, the basic essence would be, uh, which is given in the um, uh, in this so called second column in the concept when risk aversion property is there, the purse will reject a fair gamble and if you remember the example which I gave, you have a fair gamble on one side and a certainty uh, situation on the other side and the example which I gave for the fair gamble, you have the unbiased coin and for the certainty one, you have that example which I gave for the Sholay film. The the coin where heads were there on both sides. So, you will reject a fair gamble that means, you are risk averse. So, you will always take the certain situation. In the risk neutral one, you are just considering the fair gamble and the sure event and you will be indifferent. And the case when it is a risk seeking, you will always select the fair gamble because you think if you win the one where the return is higher or the outcome is higher, you will always win. But I did also mention that is as you change the overall stake of the game or the values, person can change his or her position depending on what his or her risk appetite is. So, we will consider these two important property, uh, which is first one basically is the absolute risk aversion property. So, is a property uh, of the utility function, where the concept of absolute risk aversion. So, the con it is important to remember when we mean by absolute risk aversion. So, that means, risk averse means you are running away from this the in the concept, then absolute risk aversion would mean that there would be some property which can be either positive, 0 or, or negative and we will define that accordingly. It can be proved in, in in, in simple concept, uh, I, I would not be going to the proof, I will just mention it. So, the concept of absolute risk aversion property is A w is equal to minus u double prime divided by u prime. So, we know that u prime is as per the concept of non cessation you always consider this to be positive. And if I consider the, the property of u double prime, in one case it can be less than 0, other case can be equal to 0 and the third case can be when it is equal to greater than 0. And there is a minus sign also remember is a minus sign here also. So, the sign of A or A prime would depend on the sign of U double prime depending on whether the person wants to take a risk, wants to avoid the risk or is indifferent to risk. For the three different types of person, so what you have considered as I just mentioned, loves risk, hates risk and is indifferent to risk, we can prove that for the case when you have a prime as 0 less than 0, it will be a decreasing absolute risk aversion property. And what we mean by that, I will come to that with the examples. When we have the case when A prime is equal to 0, you have the constant absolute risk aversion property. So, this is important constant with respect is to 0 equal to and when we mean, mean mention decreasing it is basically less than 0. And finally, we will have the increasing absolute risk aversion property where A prime is greater than 0. So, the increasing properties would basically mean that this is true.
So, in one case a prime less than 0, in the second case a prime equal to 0 and in the third case a prime is uh, greater than 0. So, less than equal to and greater than depending on the fact it is decreasing constant and increasing. Now, what we mean by absolute risk aversion property uh, to be increasing, decreasing or, or less than 0. So, it is a prime what we are talking about. So, in words I will try to explain. So, the first column which you see the property of decreasing constant and increasing absolute risk aversion property matches what is given here for decreasing you have a prime is less than 0 constant a prime is equal to 0 and increasing is a prime is greater than 0. What it actually means if we consider the for the case for decreasing it would mean as wealth increases that is as w increases the amount net work the net value held in risky assets increases. If it increases it means that you have you are willing to take the risk that is why it is mentioned as decreasing absolute risk aversion property based on the fact that there is an increase in the amount held in risky assets as your amount of, of wealth increases. W increases so obviously you apportion a value of your total money risk asset which is also increasing. In the case when you have the, the, the concept as wealth increases, so in, in first case also in the second case also which I am discussing and also in the third case which we will discuss wealth is always increasing that means W keeps increasing. So, W increases here, W also increases in the first case. So, as wealth increases the amount held in, held in risky assets remains the same, which means based on the fact that is constant absolute risk aversion property, the level of wealth invested in risk assets remain the same irrespective of the fact that the value increases of W. And finally, when you have the case that as wealth increases, the amount held in risky assets decreases. So, hence you have an absolute risk aversion, absolute risk aversion property which is increasing in the sense that you are running away from risk because you are decreasing your level in uh, investment in the risky assets and here also W increases. So, A prime is greater than 0 for the case when this is true which you have already seen the last slide, but only important fact is that the amount held in risky assets decreases. This is important. We would not be going to the details, but this is important. Similarly, we see that A prime is equal to 0 for this case, which means the amount held in, in risky assets remain the same. And if I go back to the first one, A prime is less than 0, which means the amount held in risky assets increases amount wise. That is why it is known as we have been mentioning is absolute risk aversion property for both the or the three cases, whether risky, non risky and indifferent. Now, the second property which is true is known as relative risk aversion property. And when I go to the formulation which can also be proved is given by this. Only important fact here which is different with respect to the first value, first concept which was absolute risk aversion property was this. Here u prime by the first property we know is greater than 0. 
and u double prime can be less than 0, u double prime can be equal to 0 and u prime can be greater than 0. So, the sign of r or r prime would obviously always depend on u prime because the factor of minus is there as it was and w value is wealth is always negative considering that amount of investment. So, the sign uh, would be dictated based on what we know about the concept of u uh, double prime, but obviously the utility function will be important as we will see later on. So, again following the same concept now remember it is relative that was the word absolute. So, absolute means in the absolute sense relative means in the relative sense something to do with uh, the concept if you mean by relative marking and absolute marking scheme. So, once you are finding in the uh, relative scale percentage wise another case you are finding in the absolute scale. So, here percentage wise would be the important for the, the relative risk aversion property. So, if I consider the, the decreasing relative risk aversion property as usual as we have considered that there it was a prime here it will be r prime would be less than 0. If I consider the concept of constant relative risk aversion property here r prime would be equal to 0 and when we consider the concept of, of increasing relative risk aversion property here r prime is greater than 0. Same thing there you consider a prime here it is r prime and these are all in the relative sense that how relative risk aversion properties do hold. When I consider the same concept here just pay attention to the second column what is written here other things remain the same. So, for the case when you have the decreasing relative risk aversion property r prime is less than 0 and here as wealth increases here also w is increasing as it was in the first case, but there it was in the absolute sense here it is in the percentage sense percent held in risky assets increases that means you are you have a decreasing relative risk aversion property that means you want to take more and more risk. The, uh, so, here absolute and percentage wise uh, do make sense. When I consider the constant relative risk aversion property r prime is equal to 0 and here also as wealth increases the percentage held in risky assets remains the same percentage there was in the absolute sense it was same. And finally, when I consider the increasing relative re, increasing relative risk aversion property here all it will be r prime is greater than 0. So, as wealth increases so w is increasing then in that case percentage hand in risky assets decreases it is decreasing here important to note. In this example it remains the same which is important to note and here also wealth is increasing and the first one which I have marked w is increasing, but here percentage held in risk assets is increasing which is important to note and how they will be utilized I will come to that within few minutes. Now, we will consider four simple utility functions quadratic, logarithmic, exponential and power. I will may lay more stress on quadratic utility function I will come to that later why it will be not be so apparent here in the discussion for this course, but it will become more apparent when we do the second course in the area of risk analysis, where concept of extreme value distribution, normal distribution considering the simple case, then you have the EVD, uh, the fracade distribution, the type 1, type 2 EVDs which are there they will be important. So, here you see 
I am just marking it here the quadratic the equation is given the logarithmic the equation is given I will come to that all these things later exponential equation and the power of the equation. So, just note you can write down the quadratic as a quadratic function with some values for a b and c. So, generally you can have a quadratic equation as a x square plus b x plus c. So, this a b c would have certain meaning or implication when you are considering the quadratic equal function. In the logarithmic one it is log e of u of w. So, this is equal to u w or the utility similarly for the exponential you have a as a positive constant and the c which is the parameter and the power util function would be a value less than equal to 1 and c cannot be 0 because c is 0 obviously the power util function is 0. So, let us go one by one by the uh, uh, and discuss these four util functions in somewhat detail as per the requirement for this course. So, the util function is given by w is equal to minus b w square. Now, in general the util function even though it, it I did mention here uh, these four util functions, but their explicit form may not be known. So, if it is not known we want to find out what are these characteristics of the util function here where absolute discursion property and the relative discursion property do come into picture. Why? Let us see. So, if I have this quadratic util function and if I want to find out the property of a a prime I am not writing w here r and r prime these four together would give us a lot of information about the utility function which we are discussing. So, let us see and this concept of trying to utilize a a prime r r prime would be recurring for all the four different utility function which we are discussing first of which is the quadratic utility function. So, if I find out a we remember a is given by minus u double prime by u prime and r is given by minus w u double prime by u prime. So, we can find out u prime as when a dif differentiating with respect to w it will be 1 minus 2 b w and u double prime would be equal to minus 2 b. So, if I consider a, so a is basically minus u double prime by u prime. So, uh, if u prime goes there, so it becomes uh, a, a value which is, so here what we consider, okay, now we will need to take out a prime. So, a prime would be basically you have to differentiate d a d w. So, you have the functions given here and when I find out a prime and r prime the values which we get are given here. We can easily sit down with a piece of paper and pencil and solve it. So, a prime is this. Now, look at this equation carefully. Irrespective of b, whatever the value is b, the numerator is always positive. So, I mark the numerator positive and similarly to the denominator, it is a square is always positive. Hence, a prime being positive, it would mean an increasing absolute risk aversion property which is true for the quadratic utility function. When I come to r prime, I plug it in this equation considering a r a prime r prime have been calculated. So, the denominator is also positive here and if you remember that depending on the value of b. So, b being positive 
So, you will always also have an increasing relative risk aversion property. So, increasing absolute risk aversion property which is true for A prime and increasing relative risk aversion property which is true for R prime would basically give us the information about the utility function being quadratic. So, I will try to I will pause here and discuss something about the quadratic utility function. Now, whenever you are uh, making uh, investment, so if you remember I mentioned that you invest I naught and you get a return or a total revenue return after a certain period of time, one unit of time is I 1. So, I naught you invest, I 1 you get. So, the basic fact we know this R is not equal to relative risk aversion, remember this is returns. So, returns can be found, found out as I 1 by I naught and small r can be found out by I 1 minus I naught by I naught and we also know that considering log normal distribution r is equal to n n of p 2 by p 1, where p 1 and p 2 are the corresponding um, uh, end of the day prices at day 1 and day 2 considering that you are trying to find out the return small r between these two days which is day 1 and day 2. Now, I also did mention that we will always consider in the simplistic sense the return r small r to be normally distributed, but I did also mention that if you take the positive r or the negative r if you remember when we have drawn considering the BSC or the NSC we have um, uh, plotted or uh, found out not plotted found out small r values and there were some positive values and negative values. So, positive I showed in blue color, negative I showed in red color. So, if you plot them separately the red or the blue you will get a skewed distribution depending on whether you are trying to find out the loss distribution or the profit distribution. Now, if I only concentrate on small r and if I assume the small r is normally distributed then we will intrinsically assume and it can be proved that the utility function would be quadratic in nature and this is an if and only if implication that means both implication holds that means returns being normal utility function would be quadratic or utility function being quadratic returns would be normally distributed and this will be coming up later on not so much in this course but later on as I'm, I have been mentioning about the second course which is in the area of risk analysis because if I consider different type of other distribution which I just mentioned extreme value distribution their returns are not normal then the uh, util function need not always be quadratic in nature. Now and by the word quadratic in which um, um, nature and normal distribution I do mean the normal distributed um, curve the bell shaped curve which we are so familiar with. Now, I have plotted it this is just a simple thought out experiment uh, I have not uh, written all the column values we, you can definitely take your time out and do the same. So, what I have done is in an excel sheet I have just uh, made a copy of the important points or the values uh, which I have uh, made on the excel sheet. So, here in the first column I mark some values of w. So, they are taken as discrete and you can take decimal values also you can take 100, 200, 300 also, but for sake of convenience I took values starting from 2 to 11 which you see in the first column. Now, in the second column considering a b value which you can easily calculate and find it out from yourself. Uh, I write down the value of u w which is the quadratic util function. So, the quadratic util function considering that wealth is 2 it will be 2 minus b into 2 square which is 3. When I come to the value of 3 it will be 3 minus b into 3 square is equal to 5.25 and so on and so forth. So, I mark down all the values here. Now, there is a third column and a fourth column which I have not written down here you can plug in just for your own understanding. There is a third column where I find out u prime and there is a fourth column where I find out u double prime. 
So, if you know that when I try to find out d y d x in simple calculus, it is basically del y del x which is equal to y 2 minus y 1 by x 2 minus x 1. And if you remember, so this is basically the concept which we will utilize for u prime. So, when I want to find out u prime, so these are the values which I need to have. So, u, y 2 minus sorry this is y 1 my mistake. So, it is y 2 minus y 1. So, that means the difference of these two values. So, y 2 is 5.25 minus y 1 is 3 divided by x 2 minus x 1 which is u 2 minus u 1 would be 3 minus 2. When I go to the second value to find out the derivative, it will be y 2 minus y 1 which is here u 3 minus u 2 which is 8 minus 5.25 divided by w 3 minus w 2 which will be 4 minus 3. Then I try to find out the, the value of this, uh, the derivative in the third um, value. If I follow the column wise for u prime, the third cell value because the first cell technically would, be, would not be any value, it is blank. So, it will start filling up st starting from the second cell. So, the, so the second cell I have already mentioned, third cell I have already mentioned, when I come to the fourth value, it will be 11.25 minus 8 divided by 5 minus 4, then it will be 15 minus 11.25 divided by 6 minus 5 and I continue likewise to find out the values of of u prime. So, I can populate the values of u prime. Now, we also know from simple calculus what is second derivative is d 2 y d x 2. So, d 2 y d x 2 we can utilize the same concept as we know y 2 minus y 1 divided by x 2 minus x 1 was for the case for d y d x. So, similarly, once I have u prime which is the third column where I put uh, the green tick mark and I also have w which is the first column utilizing these two columns which is the, the third column and the first column. We can find out the values for the numerator and the denominator here and you can double check what these values are. So, d 2 y d x 2 uh, would be calculated such that again I utilize the values which are here. So, I have already found, found out where I am putting one cross mark in green. It was the value of 5.25 minus 3, 3 divided by 3 minus uh, 2 that gave me u prime. Similarly, the first value of the u prime or the first cell is not there, the second value which is in the uh, first value in the second cell. Similarly, the value again I am, I am again repeating would be 8 minus 5.25 divided by 4 minus 3. So, once I have that along with w, I can find out u double prime. So, u double prime would basically be populating the fourth column. So, I am using simple calculus to find out u prime and u double prime. Once I have u prime and u double prime, you remember the formula for u prime we know is equal to minus ok a we know sorry not the a prime a you know is minus u double prime by u prime. These values which are there in the sec third and the fourth column would give us the values corresponding to a. So, these values are given out we can again I am again seeing you can calculate using these concepts and once a is found out again a prime would be what simple it will basically be again we are using w y 2 minus y 1 this y and x I am using just in the nomenclature sense to make things simple in the numerator divided by x 2 minus x 1. So, y 2 minus y 1 would be minus 2.0 minus or minus of 2.25, so which is the difference between these divided by 3 minus 2. The second value would be obviously the first cell is not there, 
the first value would be in the second cell, the second value will be in the third cell would be minus of 0.17 minus of minus 0.20 in the numerator divided by 4 minus 3. And once we find out the values of A prime are given which I am now again marking in light yellow. So, these are A prime. So, these are important for me I have just found out. Similarly, I in plug in and know what is the value of, of R. I know R is this minus W u double prime by u prime. So, based on that I have these values. So, R is calculated by minus u prime which is there in the fourth column multiplied by w which is in the first column divided by u prime which is in the third column. Based on that I have these values which are r and again I find out r prime which I follow the concept as again r prime is equal to y 2 minus y 1. Again I am saying y 2 minus y, y 1 are basically the differences which I take here this is this is minus 0 0.60 minus of minus 0 0.50 divided by 3 minus 2 3 minus 2 is in the new denominator similarly the second value would be minus of 0 0.67 minus of minus 0 0.60 divided by 4 minus 3 so based on that once i find out i find out the values of r prime so, the main discussion and the important fact is that how you calculate which I did mention time and again how you calculate u prime and u double prime. For that remember dy dx is equal to this and similarly d 2 y dx 2 would be found out which we all know and using very simple calculus just class 11 or 12 calculus. Once you have this value, I just for our convenience, I plotted them. The graph may not be very clear here, but you can do uh, a zoom in when you draw it in Excel sheet. So, I have plotted in the graph in the uh, y axis, I have the different uh, concepts of utility and in the x axis, I have the value of w which is wealth and what are plotted for this uh, quadratic utility functions are as follows. If you can see and obviously uh, these are u w which is the utility function which is quadratic shown in pink color, a which is the absolute risk aversion property uh, which is shown in yellow color, a prime is shown in blue, bluish green or the uh, greenish blue bluish the bluish color sort of thing. Then the uh, a little bit violet color is R which is relative risk aversion property and, uh, and, um, and R prime is shown in brown. So, based on that you can plot the graph. Only important thing which is very obvious. So, if you pay attention here this pink line which I am now highlighting blue exactly looks like the quadratic utility function as it should be because it is a quadratic utility function. So, these values which I have drawn remember they are based on the fact of the excel sheet which I have just discussed few minutes back. So, those values I have transferred in the excel sheet and drawn them. So, from here you can if you were able to plot in details a prime and r prime you can you could have found out the properties which I had been mentioning that increasing relative risk aversion property does hold and increasing absolute risk aversion property does hold for the quadratic utility function. Now, let us come to the second utility function which is the logarithmic utility function and if I follow the simple concept which you know uh, in calculus u prime is 1 by w and u double prime is equal to minus 1 by w square. 
So, I want to utilize that. So, for the first case, I know A is equal to minus u double prime by u prime. So, when I put it here minus or minus plus 1 by w square by 1 by w. So, it becomes 1 by w when I find out a prime this is equal to minus 1 by w square as it is here. So, when I utilize the concept of r is equal to minus w u double prime by u prime is equal to minus minus becomes plus w of 1 by w square by 1 by w it becomes 1. So, obviously, when I differentiate that uh, prime is 0 as it is shown here. So, we have as it is w is positive. So, w square is also positive and the denominator is positive we have a minus sign. So, you have a decreasing absolute risk aversion property based on a prime is equal to less than 0 and as it is r prime is 0. So, you have a constant relative risk aversion property which is here for, for the logarithmic one. So, let us again do the same simple thought out experiment on the values plotting in order to understand in more details. So, here <coughs> I mark as usual w in the as take hypothetical values in the first column, ln of w which is marked in the second column. The third and the fourth column as usual which are not marked here are u prime and the fourth column is let me use a different color u is u double prime. Again we use the same concept. For u prime, we use the concept which is dy dx which is equal to y 2 minus y 1 by x 2 minus x 1 and similarly when I go to u double prime the concept is d 2 y d x 2 and we will be utilizing this concept correspondingly everywhere. So, d 2 y d 2 y d x 2. So, if I use these concept, so the for the blue one which is u prime, I find out this difference. So, the first cell is not there, is empty. The second cell which is the first value is be, would be 0 0.69 minus 0 divided by 2 minus 1. Similarly, the third value which is in the uh, second value which is in third cell would be 1.10 minus 0 0.69 divided by 3 minus 2. Similarly, 1.39 minus 1.0 divided by 4 minus 3 and we continue doing it. So, we populate u prime. Similarly, utilizing the concept of d 2 y d x 2 concept where we utilize the third third column and the second column, I find out the values of u double prime and remember this is true. So, that will give me u prime and u double prime. I put them in the equation which I know for a is minus u double prime by u prime and I plug the values which are there in the third and the fourth column, I get a prime. Similarly, finding out and utilizing the difference of a divided by the difference of w, I will get the values of a prime. Similarly, I am not repeating it, we get the same value. Then when I come to r, r we know is equal to minus w u double prime by u prime. For this we will be utilizing 
the concept which is there in the fourth column u double prime, third column u prime and the first column information that or the values which is w based on that <coughs> that I find out r w. Similarly, I, I find out the difference of, um, of minus 1 minus or minus 1 divided by 2 minus 1 again minus 1 minus or minus 1 divided by 3 minus 2 and so on and so forth. Very interestingly, the values of r which I have just found out using the concept of, of this and from this it immediately gives us the value the concept that r prime is 0 as we have already seen, seen it theoretically this constant relative risk aversion. And this is a decreasing absolute risk aversion property which is <coughs> also so evident from the values of a prime. So, mainly I wanted to point out r prime. So, again when I plot this is logarithmic util function along the y axis we plot these values as u a a prime r r prime and along the x axis we have w. And even though this would be a little bit better visible than the last graph, but definitely we are use, use the same uh, coloring scheme u prime u as pink a as yellow the bl uh, bluish one is a prime r as violet and r prime as brown. So, I have just drawn it in order to make it simple. Again I am saying these graphs are drawn in excel utilizing the thought out values which I have just discussed in the last slide using the simple excel, excel calculation. And here important thing we did mention r prime was 0. So, if you see it carefully r prime all values are on 0 that means on the 0 line which is the x axis. Now, let us come to the exponential utility function. So, if I exponential utility function is given by minus e to the power minus a w. So, if I find out u prime it is equal to minus minus e to the power minus a w with the value of a and u prime double prime is equal to minus a square e to the power minus a w. And when I plug it here, so if I am coming to a, I should use a different color sorry, when I come to a it is equal to minus u double prime by u prime is equal to minus of minus plus a square e to the power a w by a e to the power minus a w. So, this is minus also. So, these values can be eliminated you have plus a. So, when I find out a prime it is 0 as it is here and when I come to finding out the value of r minus w u double prime by u prime is equal to. So, this is minus minus plus w a square e to the power minus a w by a e to the power minus a w these values can be they are not 0. So, they can be eliminated you have value of a w differentiating r gives as a value of a as it is here. So, what does it? So, these are theoretical concept which I am discussing. So, so for a prime is equal to 0 you have constant absolute risk aversion property as it is here a prime is 0 and for the concept when when r w is a you have an increasing relative risk aversion property considering the value of a which you have considered. So, again the same concept we follow we plot it using uh, the excel sheet. So, in the first column we mark w which is given in the, the first column 
and the second column I am taking minus e to e to the power minus a w, I will come back to the value of a later on. So, this is in the second column. For our convenience, we will mark a prime in the third column which is not shown and also the value of u double prime which is also not shown will be in the fourth column. We use the same concept, same concept what we mean is this. If I am repeating, please bear with me u prime is basically the concept of dy dx is y 2 minus y 1 by x 2 minus x 1 and similarly when I come to u double prime it is the concept of d 2 y dx 2 and we use the same concept here. So, these are obtained uh, without repetition let me go and not need not go into that. Based on that, when I plug in these values and this is what I want to mention, what when I plug in these values a is equal to minus u double prime by u prime when I plug in. So, I utilize the values of the third column and the fourth column, I get a value of a which is minus 0.25. So, if, you, if I consider this minus 2.5 this is the value which of a which I had got is a small a capital A is the absolute risk aversion property and small a was the value the parameter. So, this parameter as I mentioned I will come back to that later on. So, this is the value minus 0 0.25. So, these are the values and obviously the differentiation as we have seen is 0 also it is 0 because dy y 2 minus y 1 in all the cases is always minus 0.25 minus or minus 0.25 which is 0 irrespective of the fact, fact whatever you have w which is there given in the difference you can find out using the first column. Hence, a prime is 0 as it is and as it was calculated in the last slide here. So, absolute risk aversion property was constant which is again being confirmed by this excel sheet. When I utilize that the, the value to find out r minus w u double prime by u prime when I plug in these values, values means the first column which is w, the third column which is u prime, fourth column which is u double prime when I am plugging these values, I have these values of r w given. Again I utilize them and find out the difference which is y 2 minus y 1 my 0.75 minus 0 0.5 which is the first value in the numerator divided by 3 minus 2. Second value is 1 minus 0 0.2 so 0.75 divided by 4 minus 3 third value is 1.25 minus 1 divided by uh, 5 minus 4 and so on and so forth. Again very interestingly the r prime values we see are all the same and if you see this is exactly equal to the value of a which I found out. So, the a value was 0.25 and that was constant. So, it is an increasing relative risk aversion property and it has been proved once again using both theory which was in the last slide and the simple concept of the, the excel sheet which I have just plotted uh, which I noted down and I plot them. You have this is the exponential uh, uh, utility function in the y axis I plot in the corresponding color pink as u, yellow as a which is absolute risk aversion property, a prime as the as in bluish bluish color, r in violet and r prime in brown and you can have a look that considering a as positive with a negative sign, it is basically an exponential function which is basically going towards the uh, fourth quadrant considering the quadrant one which you concept which you already know. Finally, let us consider the concept of power utility function and here if you remember c is less than equal to 1 and not equal to 0. So, once I differentiate that I can find out u prime and u double prime 
and uh, without going to the details I can prove if uh, c minus 1 is basically the value into w square is the value divided by w square is the value which I get for a prime and the value of r prime I get as, as 0. So, if I concentrate on these concept it is basically mentions that a prime is negative because c is less than equal to 0. So, it is a decreasing absolute risk conversion property and r prime is 0 hence it is a constant relative risk conversion property. I am trying to use the same coloring schemes as that it would stick in your mind as we proceed with this four utility functions. So, again I use the same concept plot w mark values of w again hypothetically starting from 2 to 11 in the first column u prime u I take in the second column. I have not written down. So, I this is u prime is given in the third column and the value of u double prime is given in the fourth column and if we remember we take the same concept this concept coming from d y d x which is equal to y 2 minus y 1 divided by x 2 minus x 1 and the concept of, of um, u double prime being the case when you have d 2 y d x 2 concept and these can be checked again I am saying from a simple class 10 or 11 uh, maths book. So, I have the values of u prime, I have the values of u double prime have means I can find out fill it it up but it is not given in this slide. Based on that I then move on to find out a given by minus u double prime by u prime these values are found out utilizing the second and the third column and once I utilize the concept of a prime which is also again the same concept divided by dx which is y 2 minus y 1 divided by x 1 x 2 minus x 1 and again I am repeating y and x I am using just the concept that what is the function and, and it is being differentiated to, to which function or which variable and this variable is x here which is w here. Based on that I find out the difference which is in the numerator 0 0.25 minus 0 0.38 divided by 3 minus 2. The second value will be 0 0.19 minus 2 0.25 divided by 4 minus 3 then is 0 0.15 minus 0 0.19 divided by 5 by minus 4. Based on that I find out a prime then I plug in the values of to find out r, r is minus w into u double prime by u prime there I use the first, the third and the fourth column. I am just marking that to make uh, the continuity being there. Based on that I, I, I find out r w and again I utilize the same concept. Numerator being minus of 0.75 minus of minus 0.75 divided by 3 minus 2. And if you see the values in R w all the values are same. So, the numerator always remains the same so, irrespective of at which stage you are trying to find out the dy dx. So, obviously, it will immediately mean R, w, R prime is 0 and it immediately matches with the case which we have seen when we differentiated using the simple calculus concept. So, it is a constant relative risk conversion property. So, I plot it here again this is the power utility function along the y axis we have the different functions which is u in pink color, a in yellow, bluish color is a prime, r in violet and r prime in brown and in the x axis we have w and you can see very interestingly few important facts are important so I am highlighting them. If you see here, here r prime was 0 here. So, technically this brown line which you see along the x axis is 0 as we have found out using calculus as well as using the excel 
sheet using the simple class 10 and 11 concept. Um, so, with this I will end uh, this lecture and continue cons considering the concept of certainty equivalent and so on and so forth which is the remaining portion of utility analysis in the next class. Have a nice day and thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.